Hello, thank you everyone for watching my videos. I'm very grateful for all you've been doing, uh, for your support. Uh, it is, it's utmost incredible and I want to commend everybody for supporting God Neo TV uh, thus far. Yeah, in our previous studies, uh, our previous session, uh, we discussed foreign exchange control, differences in currencies, and then also demand and supply uh, of Forex. And we all agree that Forex simply means foreign exchange. So uh, in today's video, I would uh, like to introduce you to a new topic and I would like you to stay tuned uh, till the end. This, this would really help you if you're looking for materials uh, or videos to study for your examinations. Stay tuned and watch this video. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you are welcome once again to today's uh, session. Yeah, today uh, I would like us to look at the theories that explain how exchange rate is determined. The theories that explain how exchange rate is determined. Uh, there are two theories that are involved, or the two, there, are two, there are two theories that explain how uh, exchange rate is determined. The first one is the monetary, the monetary uh, approach, and then the second one is the elasticity approach. We have the monetary approach and the elasticity approach. Now, I would like to check them one after the other. Now, monetary policy or the monetary approach, uh, it's one of the approaches that is usually considered uh, or it is the leading theory when it comes to the exchange rate or the determination of the exchange, the exchange rate. Now, the leading theory in respect of the exchange rate in the long run is the monetary approach of the balance of payment. I hope by now <clears throat> we all know what is the balance of payment. I will check that. Uh, I will explain that later on if in case you do not know. If you also want to understand it better, you can send me uh, a question on it and I will explain to you. Now, the starting point of this approach is the concept of the purchasing power parity. The purchasing power parity, the 3P or the, uh, the PPP. Now, what is the PPP means? What does it mean? Now, the PPP simply means the ability to buy similar goods uh, on similar market at similar prices, uh, taking that there are no transport costs or uh, trade barriers to influence the prices of such goods and services. Now, if we say similar prices uh, at a similar price uh, and, and similar goods on similar market at a similar price, now what this means is that if I want to, to buy, uh, uh, how do you call it, the dollar, uh, the, the US dollar, if I should take into account three different uh, countries, when the dollar is, 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 is traded for, uh, let's say 17.5 rand as at now uh, in South Africa, uh, when you go to, let's say Nigeria, it should also be 17.2, uh, the, the Naira should be the same. And then if you go to uh, Ghana, the exchange rate should be the same. There shouldn't be any differences across. Now, whenever you want to buy a particular currency, it should be at almost the same rate across uh, the different countries. Then we can say we're talking about the purchasing power parity there. Now, if we look at this uh, prices at similar markets, uh, similar uh, goods, then it simply means that we're not considering transportation costs and then uh, barriers or barriers to trade that will influence the prices of goods and services. Now, I, I would like to move on. I would like to move on. I don't know if by now we all understand what are these theories. There are two theories uh, that explain how action rate is determined. The first one is the monetary theory. The second one is the elasticity theory. Now, 
I would like us to move on. Now, if we talk about uh, how to call it, the monetary theory, uh, theory uh, or approach, then we will be looking at the price determinations, the price determinations. Based on the monetary approach, price levels inside a country are determined by price levels outside a country and are transferred through the exchange rate. And now what does this mean? If we talk about price level in a country, it's determined about price level from another country. Now, let's say, for instance, I, 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 uh, I travel to Canada and I want to buy a particular item there. Now, what it means is that the exchange rate is driving the prices of those goods and services there. All right. Now, if uh, the price level of a basket of goods in, the, uh, in Canada is, uh, let's say, six Canadian dollars, now, that will reflect uh, in South Africa, which means that if I should buy a goods, any amount of goods in South Africa, uh, uh, the, uh, the same basket of goods should be equivalent to that of the uh, Canadian dollars. That is what it simply means. Now, an example is a domestic price in one country compared to the other is such that $100 will buy twice as large a basket of goods in the U.S. as you can buy for 100 rand in South Africa. Let's remember because of the exchange rate, the prices, the, the, the currencies are different. If you take $100, it, it won't give you 100 rand in South Africa. It won't give you 100 naira in Nigeria. It won't give you 100 peso in Argentina, you know. So what $100 can buy outweighs uh, the amount of goods or services that a hundred rand can buy in South Africa. It outweighs the amount of goods and services that a hundred naira can buy. It outweighs the goods and services hundred pesos can buy in Argentina. All right. Now, purchasing power parity implies that the exchange rate must be two rand equals to one dollar. Two rand equals to one dollar. Now, uh, in our previous uh, discussions, we we stated the coating, how the exchange rate is coated. We said there is a direct coating and an indirect coating. I believe if you've been following my uh, videos by now, you should understand which kind of coating is this. Two rand equals to uh, one dollar, which is a direct coating. All right. Now. Should the dollar be exchanged for more? If in case it happens that the dollar is exchanged for more than two rands, for more than two rands, now what is going to happen is that people in the United States would have to sell their dollars and buy goods and services from, from, from South Africa. What does it mean? It means that the dollar has more value uh, compared to the South African rand. Therefore, as the dollar... Uh, what the rand, uh, uh, let me say, depreciates. Let me use the word depreciate, which means if the uh, one dollar, assuming one, uh, what, uh, uh, one dollar is equal to five rand, or let's say five rand is equal to one dollar, people in the United States will prefer to buy more, which means that the, the, the South African rand is depreciating for that matter. People would purchase from here compared to purchasing from the the, the USA. Now, now the formula to determine the, the exchange rate based on the PPP is exchange rate is equal to domestic price over the world price. Exchange rate is equal to domestic price equal, uh, over the world price. In simple terms, it simply means that our exchange rate, for us to know the exchange rate, it means that if we should take the domestic price, that is currently as I'm making this video, it is one, uh, it is 17 rand, it equals to what? One dollar. So that is that our domestic rate in this case is what? 17 rand, and then our world price is what? Is the, the one dollar. All right. Now. Factors leading to depreciation of a currency. What are some of the things that leads to the depreciation of a currency? 
I would like to take it first and then I will explain them one after the other. When the domestic money supply increases, resulting in an increase in domestic price level, people decide to buy more imports and other, uh, and other countries buy less South African goods. This leads to a fall in demand for the run and the exchange rate depreciates. I'm going to take that once again. When the domestic price, let's take it for instance, the domestic price now is South African Iran. Uh, if there's a, the domestic money, which is the South African Iran, uh, increases in terms of supply, resulting in an increase in domestic price levels, which it means, what this means is that if uh, there is more money that is issued into the economy uh, because of the increases in the prices, the price levels of goods and services, people will decide to buy more from outside. People living in South Africa will prefer to buy more goods and services from outside. And people outside South Africa would not like to buy from South Africa at all, or they would buy less from South Africa. Now, if that happens, it leads to a fall in the demand for the run and the exchange rate depreciates. It will lead to the fall of the of the uh, of the run. It only does not lead to the fall of the run, and it also affects the goods and services that are purchased uh, by other people from other countries uh, in South Africa. Now, let's look at money supply. Money supply increases resulting in more imports. This results in our currency depreciating, which in turn will result in imports and domestically produced goods becoming more expensive. The increased price after uh, the increased price uh, prices.